Homage to the Blessed One, the Perfect One, the Harmoniously Awakened One. Today, I am going to talk to you about what is Buddhism. Today in the modern world, especially in the West, when people begin to speak about Buddhism, there are different kinds of Buddhism. There is Tibetan Buddhism, there is Chinese Buddhism, there is Japanese Buddhism, there is Burmese Buddhism, Thai Buddhism, Sri Lankan Buddhism, and also they begin to label these Buddhisms as uh, Theravada or Mahayana or Vajrayana and various ways. But in actual fact, Buddhism can only be one thing, which is the teachings of the Buddha. When the teachings of the Buddha went to different parts of the world, they were accepted into different cultures. And when the teachings entered the culture, it took a different form. So what we find today is different Buddhist cultures that come to the West, like uh, Tibetan Buddhist culture, or Chinese Buddhist culture, or Japanese Buddhist culture, or Burmese Buddhist culture, Thai Buddhist culture, Sri Lankan Buddhist culture. So these are different cultures so we have to be able to distinguish between the original teachings of the Buddha and the Buddhist cultures. Unless we are able to make a distinction, we won't be able to really understand the teachings of the Buddha. So this is why I did a lifelong research, really my research started when I was about uh, 16 or 17 years, when I was not satisfied with the teachings of the Buddha found in my culture. I was born into a Buddhist culture, but I was more interested in the truth about life than simply my culture. And uh, I was interested in understanding the 
original teachings of the Buddha. And uh, so I had to study not only the teachings of the Buddha, I was also studying other religions and also other philosophies. And uh, I studied modern psychology, Western philosophy, uh, Western science. All these things helped me to understand and uh, identify the original teachings. A very important realization was that I began to see that Buddhism normally uh, people begin to ask, what is Buddhism? Is it a religion or is it a philosophy? Some people think Buddhism is not a religion. It is a philosophy, they say. This is really uh, an idea coming from the West because for the Westerner, religion means the belief and worship of the Creator or maybe some other gods. That is how they think of religion. Now, Buddhism doesn't believe in a creator. And uh, it's not worshipping gods and praying to gods. So they begin to classify Buddhism uh, under philosophy, or they even call it a atheistic philosophy, and sometimes compared to Marxism. But that is also not correct. And uh, what I saw was that Buddhism, in, if we begin to use modern terms to define it or to identify it, it is better called a form of psychotherapy or a psychology. And, uh, but at the same time, it takes the place of religion. It is a religion in a way, and it is also a philosophy. But when we say religion, most people think it is the worship of gods. So therefore, uh, it is not strictly speaking a religion as it is understood in the West. And uh, it is also not a philosophy because philosophers are mainly making use of reason and trying to understand the world, the life and uh, everything in, by making use of human intelligence only. And the other thing is uh, philosophy doesn't mean really that we are making use of it to live our lives. So people, philosophers don't live philosophy, although they speak about philosophy. And, uh, but when we begin to take it as a kind of psychotherapy, it becomes very closely related to our lives, how we should live and how we should uh, understand ourselves. So, psychology is a better term, or psychotherapy is a better term to refer to the teachings of the Buddha. Because in a way, uh, Buddhism is a psychotherapy in the sense that uh, it is a psychotherapy for normal people. Now, today, the psychotherapy is mainly uh, for abnormal people, to make them normal. The effort of the psychotherapist is to bring abnormal suffering to a level of normal unhappiness. So, in other words, even the normal person is, uh, to a certain degree, neurotic. Uh, that is accepted by modern psychologists. And the Buddha pointed out that uh, the normal person is insane. 
sabbe putujana ummataka that means even the normal person is not fully uh, mentally healthy so perfect mental health is possible only through uh, what the buddhists call the arahant arahant is a disciple of the buddha who has reached the state of uh, perfection which is which might call uh, psychological perfection or a uh, spiritual perfection or whatever term you use it is that state of the perfect mind the mind in buddhism what we are trying to achieve is to perfect the mind the mental process so this is why uh, buddhism is more of a psychology but there is another way of understanding buddhism i see buddhism as a process of evolution now da- we have no conflict with Di- darwin's theory of evolution or the scientific theory of evolution because evolution starts with a mistake that's how we see it the mistake is that a certain uh molecule began at the beginning which had a special property and that special property was that this molecule was able to absorb atoms from its surroundings and produce molecules of its own kind and so this ability of course was the beginning of life but the thing is that every molecule that is formed is not permanent it is destroyed and when the molecule is destroyed certain uh, amount of energy is released and that energy is again used to produce new molecules so this process goes on a breaking down process and a building up process the building up process is called anabolism and the breaking down process is called catabolism both together the both processes are called metabolism so you see two processes going on at the same time but it is a birth and the death the birth and the death and this goes on and this whole process is what is called the struggle for existence so it is a struggle to exist but ultimately nothing really exists so put it to put it in uh, the buddhist terminology we see that this whole process which is not consciously done it is unconsciously happening due to the presence of the necessary conditions the psych, the 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 principle of determinism which is that everything that occurs in the world occurs due to the presence of the necessary conditions so when the necessary conditions are present it happens so it is that same principle that is going on it's not done by some special person called the creator it's just happening due to the presence of the necessary conditions and what whatever is happening it is simply although it is not done by a conscious purpose but it is an effort to become permanent in an impermanent world so this whole process called life is going on against the principle of impermanence that everything is permanent everything is impermanent and there is this struggle for existence which is a struggle to keep on existing which is the struggle to become permanent in an impermanent world but somehow this process gradually uh keeps on continuing and uh, the result is 
the process of evolution. And this evolution takes place till the human being is evolved. When the human being is evolved, the human being has what are called the five senses, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue, the body. And uh, these five senses are aware of a world. It is through the senses that we become aware of a world. In other words, we become conscious of a world. And we also begin to become conscious of a self that is aware of these things. So the thought of self becomes another concept. And these two concepts, the self as the subjective concept and the world as an objective concept. And this uh, leads to a self-consciousness which is that we are living in a world. That is, a self is living in the world. And with this consciousness begins all emotional relationships. We become attached to things. We begin to think in terms of properties. This is my property. And uh, we begin to share the world or we live in the world. But at the same time, we also begin to uh, fight with others and uh, quarreling starts and wars begin by a collective fight in the form of a war. And so we think in terms of nations, we have things, feelings called patriotism and all these things come up with the awareness of a self living in a world. Now, this is a problem and uh, this is also going against the, the motive of uh, continuing to live or exist. So, the struggle for existence, in spite of the struggle for existence, there is also a destructive process going on. And all this is because we are not fully conscious. We are only conscious of the world and ourselves living in the world. And we are aware of other things in the world and we become attached to these things or we begin to hate certain things and that is all that is going on. And uh, But ultimately, we are never really able to live forever. We die, and that death itself, we become frightened, we become worried, we become unhappy as a result. It's not only death, we begin to grow old, we begin to fall sick and die. Not only ourselves, even our relatives, or what we are attached to, our loved ones, all that is. And we also begin to depend on others and uh, as a child we are very much dependent and we are dependent on the parents but after some time we begin to realize as we grow up that even the parents are helpless and then we begin to seek some other power and that is why people think in terms of a god who is powerful who will who is helpless it gives us a feeling of uh, courage and hope and uh, just to keep on living. But ultimately, everyone has to die, even in spite of all this. So this has become a problem. Today, the modern uh, philosophers called the existentialists, they have become aware of this problem. And they have been trying to search for a solution to this. And uh, of course, here, it is the teaching of the Buddha that brings a solution to this, to realize that ultimately we are not really existing. We are only hoping to exist and we are thinking of existence. 
which is not real. It is all created by our emotions, which are self-centered. And these emotions blind us, make us blind to reality. And uh, we are mainly carried away by our emotions. And therefore, the only solution is to find a way of gaining control over the emotions and calming the emotions. And that calmness of mind uh, is what helps us ultimately to think clearly and understand the problem and realize that there is no proper person who is existing in the world. This is only an illusion. It's an illusion of existence. So when we begin to understand this fully, we realize that this is only a dream that we are existing and we have to awaken from this dream. And this process of awakening is what the Buddha achieved. He awoke from this dream of existence and that is why he's called a Buddha. A Buddha is one who is awake, the awakened one. And so it was not only that he awoke, he also began to teach others how to awaken from this dream of existence. And it is at that point that we all come to an end of all the sufferings of the world. All human weaknesses, all human sufferings come to an end when the human being awakens from this dream of existence. And that is the main message of the Buddha. So the whole teaching of the Buddha is the process of evolution. But this evolution, uh, the biological evolution is really an unconscious process. But here, when the human being has become conscious, this process is not a biological evolution where the body begins to change, but this is a psychological evolution where the mind begins to change. And it is it has to be done consciously, not unconsciously, because it is the evolution of consciousness itself. And so, when a person begins to make the effort to evolve in this way, the Buddha has shown the way, and that is what is called, today called the Noble Eightfold Path. But I call that the supernormal Eightfold Way. It is supernormal because it is an effort to go beyond the normal and to become a supernormal person and a superhuman person because all the human weaknesses disappear and ultimately the human being rises above the normal state and becomes superhuman or becomes a superman and that state uh, in that state, the human being is also able to achieve certain psychic powers which are similar to uh, what we see on the movies as Superman. But even beyond that, now even the Superman has certain human weaknesses like uh, falling in love and that sort of thing. But, uh, but the real Superman really lived during the time of the Buddha in India. And uh, he was able to produce other supermen because uh, he knew the way, which is a conscious process. And so uh, the teaching of the Buddha becomes really the process of evolution, uh, which is not the biological process, but the psychological process of evolution where the human being uh, rises beyond the normal state to a supernormal state, which is uh, a super becoming superman. And not only that, even superman is not perfect. That's not the ultimate perfection. We have to go beyond that level uh, where the Buddha begins to become aware of 
what are called the Four Noble Truths, what I call the fourfold sublime reality. And once we have fully realized this, when we have fully actualized this state of perfection, we uh, become a Buddha. A Buddha is one who is awake. And it is through this process of awakening that we begin to understand the, the importance of becoming uh, a superman or even a Buddha, which is the process of evolution. So the teaching of the Buddha is really to be understood as the process of evolution, which is of course a psychological process and therefore a psychotherapy, we might call it a psychotherapy. But even beyond that, the better way is to understand that it is the process of evolution where the human being evolves to a higher level. And that higher level is the state of the Buddha. There are three kinds of Buddhas. There is what is called the Samma Sambuddha, which is uh, what the Gautama Buddha achieved. And uh, such a Buddha is a teacher, teacher Buddha, who can teach others and help others to evolve in this way. The other kind of Buddha is a Pacheka Buddha. Pacheka Buddha is a person who may evolve to that level, but at the same time, uh, he's not able to teach others. So teaching itself is a special uh, ability. And uh, Pacheka Buddha is uh, a person who is not able to teach and share the teachings with the others. But there is the third kind of Buddha, which is called the Sravaka Buddha, who is a disciple of the Buddha, who by learning from the, uh, the teacher Buddha, the Samma Sambuddha, he is able to reach that state of perfection. But he is not able to reach that state of perfection uh, by himself alone. He has to uh, learn it from a Buddha. So there are these three kinds of Buddhas and ultimately all Buddhists are trying to achieve this state of perfection. And that is the real uh, religion because all religions are trying to uh, reach that state of perfection and they call it union with God. And God from the Buddhist point of view is not the creator of the world. It is the human being who reaches that state. So God is a human concept, which is the ideal of perfection, which human beings uh, conceive and struggle to realize through the practice of religion. And therefore, God is simply the ideal of perfection that human beings themselves can reach. And when they have reached, we call such a person a Buddha. And then when we say Buddha, we are not just talking about the ordinary human being, but one who has risen above and transcended the human state. And that person is the Buddha, one who has become God, the God become Brahma Bhuto. So I hope I have explained this. So thank you. May you all be well and happy.